Hey y'all, welcome back. Uh, today we are going to be reacting to the throne of Allah. This has been requested uh, quite a few times in uh, many of the Islam videos that we have done. And I don't have a lot of context for, for this video, but I did look at the description and it says that it is going to give a, a brief but powerful explanation of who Allah is and his greatness. Uh, that's about all I have about what this video is about. So let's go, man. All the praise is for Allah, who is the author of all existence and the most generous to his creation, while he is also the all-compelling. He is the only one worthy of our worship, having no partners, no associates, no sons, no daughters, no one whom he must consult, and no one or anything which has any comparison with him. All the praise is for Allah, who is the king of all who claim sovereignty, the only one who has the right to legislate for his creatures. He is the giver of life. He is the causer of death, while death has no effect upon him, because he is the ever-living, the self-subsisting, the eternal and the only absolute. All the praise is for Allah, who has power over all things, and there is in reality no power and no strength, no influence to cause benefit or detriment except through him. It is he who created this complex world, the seen and the unseen, the evident and the speculative, the earth and all that is on it and everything that is in it. It is he who sent his messengers and prophets, alayhim salam, with the common message of strict monotheism, which simply means that there is absolutely no one worthy of worship, no one worthy of our obedience, except the Almighty, the One, the Absolute, and who has no partners. The earlier messages... Yeah, I can't agree with that more, as um, I think everybody needs to realize in life, um, you know, you see like like rap stars or pop stars or whatever and you start to see people idolize them and um, want to be like them and dress like them and behave like them they watch reality shows and it almost seems like it takes over their personality uh, it's extremely important to remember that um, a God is God that that is who you look to for answers that is who you speak to that is the highest of high um, you know I know all people of the book understand that <clears throat> um, that the first guy I did not catch his name if they put it up there but uh, he's a, a very powerful Powerful speaker uh, that was uh, awesome and the way they've uh, created this video as well the editing and everything it's uh, it's very engaging I like it all right let's go salute and who has no partners the earlier messages which changed the world in the area in which the prophets were sent those messages we know have changed and even the prophets who brought them their names are now lost we just know in general because Allah told us in the Quran وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ اللَّهُ I've sent to every nation a messenger calling people to worship Allah alone and to avoid the worship of false gods. 
This essential message has been preserved in Islam in a way that it was never preserved before. Not because the message was different, because it was the same message, but because of the fact that there would be no other prophets who would come after Muhammad wasallam. So therefore that message now had to be protected. It had to be preserved in a way none of the earlier messages were preserved. I will relate this. What you say, you have come to know 40 years back. And what you call the Big Bang is already mentioned in the book which I read, the glorious Quran. It's mentioned 1400 years ago in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30, which says, Awalam yaral nazine kafru. Do not the unbelievers see anna samawati wal arda ka nazarat kanfak nahuma that the heaven and the earth were joined together and we closed them asunder. What you're talking about, the Big Bang. I try to imagine compressing a spring. Uh, the last man that spoke there, I, I know I've seen another video of him, uh, Dr. Zakir, I think that's his name. Um, I was looking up a video on whether or not um, mixed martial arts is haram, uh, you know, it, they, something that you should not be doing because I know um, I, I watch uh, mixed martial arts and Habib uh, Nurmega, Nurmega Madoff, I, can't, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, uh, but he's one of my favorite fighters, you know, and he's uh, he uh, represents Islam well, I at least in the aspect of extreme discipline, uh, you know, not uh, shaking hands with women and just, you know, just things of that nature. And um, yeah, Dr. Uh, Zayak, is that his name? Is uh, He was saying that uh, it is Haram because it's, um, it's a competition where you hurt each other. And uh, But the point I wanted to make about that anyway <clears throat> is that uh, his ability, I think I saw two videos from him, to recall the Quran and also from the Hadith. I'm still kind of learning about the Hadith and to just be able to quote things instantly like that and just seamlessly and smoothly in conversation. It was, <clears throat> it was so impressive. <laughs> just unbelievable. But uh, yeah, this is a great video so far. Let's go. What you're talking about, the Big Bang. I try to imagine compressing a spring. I push it closer and closer and closer together so it's smaller and smaller and smaller. And I've stored a tremendous amount of energy in that spring. And when I let it go, it bursts out, it bursts out, it bursts out. The creation of the universe, which you came to know 40 years back, is already mentioned in this book, the glorious Quran, 1400 years ago. Who could have mentioned that? in the Quran. So the atheist will say, maybe someone wrote, maybe it's a fluke, maybe it's a guesswork. A human being, regardless of who they... I'm trying not to pause it too much, but I do agree with that. How how amazing is that? You go back that far, 1400 years, and it does seem uh, very clear what that explanation is as far as in reference to the Big Bang and, uh, Big Bang and God creating life. You know, um, I'm still learning, but I'm seeing, I keep seeing these uh, like scientific uh, theories or some, in some cases, facts, and then you um, see them uh, referenced in the Quran that long ago. And there's no way that people could just um, continually guess these things. You know, it's just, uh, it's just something to really think about. All right, let's go. It's a fluke. Maybe it's a guesswork. A human being, regardless of who they are or where they are or what they do, will have this curiosity. They'll want to know, why am I here? How did I get here? And do I have a purpose? And if so, what is it? The only one who would really be able to answer that question would be the creator himself. If there is a creator, it would be up to him to tell us why we were created and what he expects from us and what this life is really about. Allah has shown the people from the time of Adam until right now, has shown the people what he wants from them. And it's a very simple thing. And that is that worship be for him alone without any partners. In fact, we know this life to be a test from Almighty God. That's why we're born and that's why we die. Because there has to be a beginning and an end for us to be tested on. The next life, after this life, no one will ever die again. A bad person or a good person, both are brought back and they continue to live in the next life. 
either in good shape or not so good shape, depending on how they did on the test. The worship of the God of Abraham, that was what was taught by these prophets. The Lord of the Arsh and Kursi, we're talking about the Lord of the worlds. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. We're talking about the Lord of the entire universe and beyond. The entire universe and beyond. You know, we live in this dunya and we are fascinated with this dunya which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed has created in a beautiful manner. We're fascinated. There are over billions of people which live on this dunya at this moment in time. Over six billion people that live on the dunya at this moment in time. This dunya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so big that there is space in this dunya for billions and billions and billions of more people. Is dunya, is that uh, Arabic for the earth? Uh, I'm not sure what that word means yet. All right, let's go. There is space in this dunya for billions and billions and billions of more people. But what is this dunya in comparison to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created out there? This dunya is insignificant. This dunya is meaningless to Allah. It means nothing. It is worthless. So worthless, compare it with the sun. The sun is one star. You know more science than me. You'll be able to tell me better. Take this planet Earth and you place it inside the sun and you will be able to place 1.3 million Earths in the sun. 1.3 million Earths in the sun. Allahu Akbar. Allah is the greatest. The sun is one star, one star. There are stars out there which are millions of times bigger than the sun. You need, you tell me this, that you need millions and millions of stars to make one galaxy. And then you tell me this, that there are zillions of galaxies out there. Let me tell you on top of this, my friend. After this, whatever you see above, whatever you see above, when you raise your head and you look above, Whatever you see above, the zillions and zillions and zillions of galaxies, let me tell you, this is everything there is within the first heaven. Everything there is within the first heaven. And Allah is the creator of seven heavens. Seven heavens. And the distance between the first heaven and the second heaven is 500 years. You know, the distance that can be covered in 500 years, at what speed? Only Allah knows. Only Allah knows. But it will take 500 years to get from the first heaven to the second heaven. 500 years from the second to the third, third to the fourth, fourth to the fifth, fifth to the sixth, sixth to the seventh. Every time it will take 500 years. After the seven heavens, you all read the Ayatul Kursi. You all know the Ayatul Kursi. After this, you have the Kursi of Allah. You have the chair of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You know these seven heavens that we've just talked about. In comparison to the Kursi of Allah, they're non-existent. They're meaningless. Rasulullah has given an example in a hadith just to give us a little bit of understanding with regards to the seven heavens in comparison to the kursi of Allah. Take a ring from your finger, take it off, the small ring that you have, and place it, let's say, in a desert, the Sahara Desert. It's the biggest desert in the world. You know that ring that we take off from our fingers and place it in the Sahara Desert what, what comparison is in between the ring and the Sahara Desert? Nothing. And that's a powerful analogy to really uh, to, to bring that point home. You know, that's cool, man. All right, let's go. The ring and the Sahara Desert. Nothing. Nothing. The seven heavens is the ring and the Kursi of Allah is the Sahara Desert. After the Kursi of Allah, you have the Arsh of Allah. 
وكان أرشو على الماء. You have the arsh of Allah. Again, Rasulullah has given, has explained, so just so that we can understand. Take the ring, place it in the desert. This time, the ring is the kursi and the arsh is the desert. What is the kursi in comparison to the arsh of Allah? Nothing. Then you have angels which carry the arsh of Allah. Their heads are in the seventh heaven and their feet. Arsh is that, um, that means dominion, right? I think. Okay, let's go. Let me rewind this just a little bit. Comparison to the arsh of Allah? Nothing. Then you have angels which carry the arsh of Allah. Their heads are in the seventh heaven and their feet are in the lowest earth. My friends, then you have the Lord of the earth and the sea. Wait a second, let me rewind that real quick when he was talking about uh, the angels there. And go back a little more. In comparison to the arsh of Allah, nothing. Then you have angels which carry the arsh of Allah. Their heads are in the seventh heaven and their feet are in the lowest earth. My friends. So if their heads are in the seventh heaven, so at the bottom, if it takes 500 years to get to each heaven and then but he says we don't know what speed that is at so the the fastest measurable speed that i'm aware of anyway is the speed of light that is a uh, hundred and eighty six thousand miles an hour it's either that or it's something pretty close to that or not or miles a second i'm sorry one hundred eighty six thousand miles per second i believe that's the speed of light so if you put that into perspective let's just say just just to uh <clears throat> kind of like, I don't know, what's the right word to use for that? <clears throat> just to put it into perspective, let's just say that it is the speed of light. So if you're going 186,000 miles per second <clears throat> and it takes 500 years to reach each level, can you imagine the size, the the enormous size of that angel? It's something that we there's no way we can even possibly comprehend something of that size you it's so large yeah, there would be no way for you to even like understand its features or to be able to even know what you were looking at that is <laughs> that is insane that is so huge i just that is unbelievable okay let's go heaven and their feet are in the lowest earth my friends then you have the lord of the earth and the sea. لا تدركه الأبصار ويدرك الأبصار هو اللطيف الخبير. He is beyond the size of Allah. Who Allah is? What Allah is? The greatness of Allah is beyond the comprehension of my little mind. This is the being that you and I are messing with.
Wow. <clears throat> yeah, that's something to to really, really think about is we can look at the most uh, brilliant men on earth today, the most advanced computers, all the computers combined together. <clears throat> and it's not even a, a percentage of a percentage of a percentage <clears throat> of, of, of what God knows, what God is, like the creator of all things. There's no way to, there's no metric there's no way to measure that that's even comparable you know it's like <clears throat> like it, we know nothing we th all we know is that, that god is real <clears throat> you know and uh, we know like the simple things around us you know like that uh, the world's here and this and that but there is a level of knowledge <clears throat> that it is just simply impossible for us to comprehend and uh, you know, I don't know exactly all the details uh, of the afterlife. You know, there's many things that none of us can possibly know. Uh, but the thought of gaining understanding in the afterlife of just the immensity and enormousness and greatness of God and his creations, like that's an exciting feeling to really think about that, you know. Uh, that was a great video. It, it was so engaging. I, I, I kept like in my mind, I was like, ooh, ooh I wanted to pause it and just uh, make some comments here and there, you know, but sometimes I get, <laughs> I might get a little carried away with that. Uh, but that was awesome. I really enjoyed that video. Um, uh, yeah, please uh, keep the recommendations coming. Um, I'm, I'm learning at a great pace here. Um, I've been listening to the Three Muslims podcast. I'm sure some of you guys know who they are. Uh, it's very informative. Um, I think I'm a little bit older than those guys, but it's cool to see, uh, you know, they're kind of like regular guys, but they're very knowledgeable in Islam. So it's kind of easy to uh, connect with them and just hear them, you know, just talk. You know, it's uh, it, it, I found that's one of the avenues that helps me uh, learn better. And I did recognize um, uh, Yusuf Estes as well. Um, I, I listened to his story. I was going on a long drive at work about how he uh, converted from Christianity uh, to Islam. And if I remember right, I believe he was a priest or a preacher or something like that. And that he met a, a Muslim man um, that his dad knew and they were doing business together. And he, you know, began to see off the strength of the Muslim man's character and his belief system and just having many discussions with him, you know, and that's how that ended up happening. You know, I don't want to give like spoilers or anything, but um, if you guys have not heard that, uh, Yusuf Estes, uh, his uh, con uh, reversion story to revert to Islam, um, I would definitely check that out. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's entertaining. Uh, he has a great personality, uh, but also it just uh, opens up perspective. Uh, so I really really enjoyed that but uh yeah please uh keep the recommendations coming um i love doing these videos um and i'll see you guys next time